The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. One soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. The Gospel of the Lord. I praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin with our novena prayer. O great Saint Peregrine, You have been called the wonder worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God for those who have had recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge that I may trust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear this disease causes in me and my loved ones. O glorious Saint Peregrine, aided in this way by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God now and for all eternity a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. Briefly, once again, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. At the end of this Mass, over at our Siena uh, room, across the way, will be a reception. And also... Uh, just as yesterday, there are these white envelopes here at the communion rail and also at the break of the church uh, where uh, you'll find uh, an opportunity to give an extra donation if, it's so, if you are so moved to do. And that gift goes directly to the assistance of the formation of the student brothers through the St. Jude Shrine. It's an opportunity to give some alms uh, for that purpose. The Church provides us this opportunity today to reflect on the most sacred heart of our Lord. And this is a great opportunity because one of the things, one of the mysteries that is found here is the humility of God. And this is something that is not often spoke about. After all, it's very difficult to conceive when we consider that God, the author of all things, took flesh to save us. We often think of his power and majesty and what a tremendous gift it was that he gave us. Yet the profound humility of God to take the flesh of the creature is also integral to this mystery and teaches us something about the Christian life. But what is humility? We ought not confuse humility with meekness. Meekness is different than humility. Meekness is those external behaviors of smallness, of unassumingness. 
Humility has more to do with our knowledge of ourself, of where we stand. Put in another way, it's knowing our place, who we are before God, and who we are among men. So for humility, it's important for us to know that we are, in some ways, better at some things than others, but not as good at other things that others may be better at. And to be comfortable with that, to not boast, to not undercut ourselves, to have that precision of understanding so that we know the gifts that God has given us. But before God, every single one of us is equal in the sense that we are like a moat of sand on a seashore, and God is the ocean, so vast beyond our understanding. And yet he would come to us, that he would bear himself for us, that his heart would be pierced for us so that we might know his love intimately. This humility, if we are able to take this virtue and incorporate it more deeply in our lives, then if we, like our Lord, when we suffer our passion as he suffered his passion, we can approach the difficulty, the trial, and the sorrows just as he did with patience and love. This all stems from that great virtue of humility. My grandmother, as I often say, most of the wisdom that I have comes from my grandmother. We would sit in the living room on occasion and talk about various things, you know, whatever, And all the sufferings of the world used to just trouble her so much. And she would say, I just can't understand how God would allow all of the suffering to occur in the world. All of the wars and the famine, disease, abortion, all these things. And she would cause her great pain and sorrow. And I'd look at my grandmother and I'd say, Grandma Ma, Sometimes I think you think you could do a better job than God at running this world. And her response was always the same. No, which really meant yes. <laughs> and sometimes I think all of us have that sort of feeling. It's a reaction that there's something wrong. If we have such a good and infinitely powerful God. Why is there so many evil things and so much bad? We've spoken about that over the course of the novena in different ways. And how God can use these things in order to save us. After all, that is what everything is about. Everything that he does is to save us so that he can spend eternity with us. Christ is our model. Christ. And seeing how our Lord endured suffering and trial, this is the answer. This is the answer to learning to reconcile ourselves to all of these things in the world. Remember at the Garden of Gethsemane, even though he's God, the suffering that he endured, taking on all of the sins of the world of all time, the intensity of that caused him to sweat blood. His agony on the cross that he freely took on for us. These are all manifestations of the humility of God in the face of trial and sorrow and pain and evil. And so if we want to be like Christ, then we must do it like him. 
be humble, uniting our will with the will of the Father. And as we are reconciled to that will, then we too can join Christ, join Christ in his saving mission, saving our own souls and the souls of those who we love and care for, and ultimately all of the souls who God loves and cares for, which is everybody. In humility, in patience, and in charity. These virtues are essential on our path to sanctity. And if we are to meet Christ at the end of that journey, then we must begin to look like him as we travel our own Via Della Rosa. Our prayer to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus. The name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings particularly. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen.